I think probably the best way to classify viruses is using this uh, systems or systemic approach because it seems to be the only one that's logical because on the one hand we have names of viruses here which almost never correspond to their precise taxonomic name even though they may seem to you might think that a parvovirus is part of the parvovirus actual name but actually it's parvoviridae so I think that the uh, systemic classification is good I think it's nice to know that they're generally either double-stranded DNA, uh, sometimes single-stranded, uh, or single or double-stranded uh, RNA. Now, in the skin family, uh, these are common viruses we have heard of. We've heard of measles. We may have had measles if we're old enough, also known as rub rubiola, the German measles variant of viral skin uh, disease is called rubella. So rubiola for measles, rubella for German measles. There's another common skin virus in the parvoviridae family or generally parvovirus causing a disease called erythema infectiosum uh, and uh, associated with aplastic anemias as well. And then we have our smallpox uh, virus caused by the vaccinia virus part of the official pox viridae family. And then we have what we call the VZ virus because it causes both varicella, which is the common chicken pox, usually in children, as well as herpes zoster or shingles in adults, generally following a dermatome distribution. Uh, same virus, different disease, different age groups. Uh, we have the family of the uh, skin herpes viruses, generally HSV1 or herpes simplex virus 1 uh, involved oral uh, vesicular lesions and HSV2 classically uh, is involved in genital vesicular herpes lesions but there's a tremendous amount of uh, uh, crossover. Um, we can also talk about the hematopoietic system. Uh, cytomegalovirus, also in the herpes family, causes a wide variety of uh, infections throughout the body, lung, kidneys, but it has a hematopoietic uh, uh, affinity as well, so that's why it's classified here. But like the herpes virus in general, it's ubiquitous. It can infect just about anything. Epstein-Barr virus, you know, a known virus involved in the uh, uh, Burkitt's lymphoma is the cause of infectious mononucleosis. You may remember that before HIV here got its name, it was called HTLV3. And it wouldn't have been called HTLV3 if there wasn't an HTLV1 and 2. Well, the HTLV1, which, like AIDS, is a single-stranded RNA virus, causes a lot of the adult uh, T-cell leukemias. Um, and of course, the third uh, portion of this, or the third named virus in this family, wound up being called HIV. So HIV, which is now generally HIV 1 and 2, was originally HTLV 3. And of course, we are going to get and have gotten a big presentation on AIDS. Arboviruses are really nothing more than viruses which are generally uh, brought to the human body by uh, arthropods. That's why they're called arbo, arthropod born. They cause a wide variety of uh, central nervous system and hemorrhagic fevers. Uh, if you hear of dengue, you know, little outbreaks occur every now and then. Uh, yellow fever, a very serious uh, virus. These are all generally very serious diseases. Dengue has a relatively low mortality, but these are all potentially uh, fatal viruses by virtue of the fact they cause hemorrhagic fevers. Uh, and you may have heard of the uh, horrific Ebola disease. These are all arthropod arthropod born viruses. 
I think you might uh, remember that the papilloma viruses, the human papilloma viruses, HPV, in the papovaviridae family, double-stranded DNA, uh, can't really be classified with the skin eruptions or skin lesions. They have a, a tremendous affinity for squamous mucosa, but not necessarily skin. So we can have a uh, HPV infection in a non-keratinized uh, stratified squamous mucosa, like uh, the cervix or the vagina or the esophagus, or uh, stratified squamous mucosas that are not uh, part of skin. And then I think rightfully so, moving up to the central nervous system, we have uh, a fam different types of viruses. There's a polio virus, now virtually uh, non-existent, uh, cause of uh, major polio myelitis epidemics in the 50s and perhaps early 60s. The uh, JC virus, don't confuse that with JC disease, Jakob Kreitzfeld, because this is now a virus, this is not a prion, and it is a cause of a disease in the central nervous system uh, involving a demyelinization called progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, chiefly in uh, opportunistic infections in immunosuppressed patients. So if you hear of a JC virus, you know it's causing uh, or indicted with PML. And then we have some more arthropod-borne viruses as being perhaps the major cause of uh, viral encephalitis, encephalitis or encephalitides. So if you hear of um, Eastern, Western, Venezuelan, St. Louis encephalitis, these are all arthropod-borne viruses. And I think that's a good general uh, classification of viruses, knowing that there is no precise classification uh, as of yet. It wouldn't be fair if we didn't talk about another uh, type of virus which do not affect humans directly, but they generally uh, affect bacteria. And in the process of uh, viruses like bacteriophages, plasmids, and transposons infecting bacteria, uh, this bacteria may change its type of virulence with respect to humans. So you can't say that these viruses uh, infect man directly, but they infect bacteria which uh, infect man and may uh, increase or even decrease its virulence uh, or its susceptibility to antibiotics, so that's worth an honorable mention. Okay, let's move into the bacteria now. The bacteria classified by various classical methods, whether they uh, pick up the gram stain, whether they're gram positive or negative in the gram positive bacteria, whether they're cocci or bacilli, they generally have a thicker wall with a one phospholipid layer, whereas the gram negative ones have a thinner wall with a two phospholipid layer. And that's basically the basis between gram positive and gram negative uh, gram staining, which would result uh, in a smear, which would be either blue for positive or red for negative. They can also be classified in their overall shape. If they're ball-shaped, they're called cocci. If they're rod-shaped, they're bacilli. Some bacteria do not take up the gram stain, and we'll get into those as well. Sometimes the bacteria can be classified, uh, despite their shape and gram staining properties, into another category of whether they require oxygen to grow, the aerobic bacteria, or they do not require or need oxygen the uh, anaerobic. Sometimes there's a third uh, intermediate category called the facultative uh, anaerobes. But uh, if you just remember the classification of bacteria is gram staining shape and oxygen requirements. Um, now we're going to get into another little busy diagram here. And I almost have to apologize for this because we'll be rattling off uh, in the next uh, chapter various uh, infections, various types of bacteria. And I know it's going to be a little bit of bu uh, busy work here, but we only have four left, and then we'll get into more graphic and hopefully more interesting stuff. Uh, I thank you very much.